This is just a short video from one Telstra customer to hopefully a lot of Telstra customers to let you know that if you think you're getting a good deal, you might want to take a bit of a closer look. I've been a faithful customer of Telstra for more than five years now and I've had very little problems with the service they've provided, but today that changed. I'll start with last week. I was cold called by a Telstra representative and advised that I was eligible to upgrade to one of the new plans that will now cost less than what I was currently paying. Seeing as I have a high-end ADSL2 connection, I was happy to save some money and agreed to help the rep representative find me a package that best suited my needs. The way they were going to work that out was by asking me several questions about how I like to use my net, how many computers were connected to my net and more. Of particular note were the questions about how I like to use my net. I was asked what type of activities did I do while I was online. My reply was that I'm a better tester of several programs, I like to play games online regularly, and I also voice chat using Skype. To which the representative replied that's good news, because he thinks he has a package that would be perfect for me. He suggests this modem package and suggested it because it's a much faster modem than the one I have now and, in his words, it would help with some latency issues I have experienced with my old modem and my internet should run much more efficiently so maybe I will see some benefit when I'm playing games online. He also suggested that because I'm on the 25 gig Liberty plan and it seems to be working out for me and my game playing online that it would be best to stick with that plan and because it was my birthday at the time, he'd send me a free modem. I thought that was pretty nice to get the new modem and only have to pay $9.95 postage. Today, I received that replacement modem from Telstra, and it's a Thompson TG782T Home Gateway. Personally, I think it looks like a 20-year-old dial-up modem, but that's beside the point. Upon installing the modem, I went ahead and tried to set it up the way my old modem was. I have a program that needs to have its ports manually forwarded so I can use the program online. So I find where to enter this information. It was pretty straightforward looking, but upon saving the settings for the program, I found the port ranges I just set up have been wiped and the program now has a blank profile with no port ranges forwarded. So I tried again. And again and again, but each time I tried, it ended with the same result. I thought I'd got to be missing something, so I downloaded the manual to see if I'm overlooking anything, and I found it was no use because all it tells you is a description of what that menu option is for. It doesn't tell you how to use it. So as a last resort, I called my internet service provider, Telstra. Now this is where the scam begins. Port forwarding really only takes less than three minutes. It's not too difficult. Some modems can be difficult because of their terminology and where they place some things. This one, however, looked pretty straightforward. But the person I spoke to at Telstra Technical Support flat out told me there's no way I can forward my ports myself. It takes a highly trained technician to do that sort of thing. I assure her I've not only done this before, but I've done it on four different modems connected to this system. At that point I was told I will not be able to forward my ports to use this game because Telstra does not support online gameplay. This was news to me, so I'll call back because the person I was speaking to put me on hold and lost the call. And when I called again, I was told straight out there's no way you can forward your own ports. You need Gizmo. The only gizmo I know is my girlfriend's cat, and I highly doubt he can help. Gizmo is a technical support company here in Australia, whom have been contracted by Telstra to handle the more advanced connection issues outside of your normal ISP connection issues. They were described to me as a premium technical support. Yeah, the word premium makes me cringe too. So they generously connected me through to Gizmo which is where I was told Gizmo could easily forward my ports for me but won't guarantee it'll work because Telstra doesn't support options such as online gameplay or voice over internet protocol. 
At this point, I was getting pretty sick of hearing Telstra don't support online gaming. As I said before, I've been a Telstra customer for more than five years and I've played game online, games online for that whole time. Previously, I was using a modem I'd purchased myself called a D-Link 604T Generation 2. I forwarded my ports for that exact program in that modem as little as six days ago. Had absolutely no issues except for random disconnection due to the modem was dying. For two years prior to that, that modem worked faultlessly. So I tried to assure the technician on the other end that this is just a five minute job at most. Something I've been able to do myself for some time and not something I should have to pay for. At that time, I was told I should have to take this up with Telstra. So I called Telstra back and want this to be done with ASAP. But as with the previous representative, it just ran round and round in endless circles, all revolving around paying Gizmo, not the cat, to come out and forward my ports. And when I refused to take that route, the representative would just sit there silent and wait for me to speak. Any questions I asked was promptly replied with, Telstra don't support online gameplay and you'll need to speak to Gizmo. After another hour of bouncing back and forth between the two, I decide to look into it a little and see if there's anywhere that tells me Telstra does not support online gameplay. And this is what I found. Firstly, I went to the little booklet provided by Telstra in the packaging for my new modem, and I found that online gameplay is referred to on four out of the 16 pages in that booklet, none of which states that it is not supported. Then when I went to their home site and looked up links such as what do I get for broadband ADSL2, I find that it's not even mentioned on their site anywhere. Online gameplay is not supported. So the next place I looked was Telstra Online Terms of Service for a Broadband Account. And nowhere in that Terms of Service is it stated that Telstra does not support online gameplay. But what I did find interesting was that in the list of accepted programs to use with this modem, there's a profile already set up for a bit client. Now I'm no genius, but it strikes me as odd that an internet service provider would stop people from using around 16 megabyte an hour of their bandwidth playing games online, but allow users to download illegal downloads with no restriction whatsoever. I mean, after all, when you sign up to a net plan with net speeds of 20,000 download over 1,000 upload and a 25 gig Liberty plan, it's not so you can web browse and download stuff from iTunes. More often than not, it's because you want to play games online. Crappy net speeds don't help online gameplay. It's the higher speeds that help online game play. So why ban people from forwarding their own ports where necessary? Are RC simulators really that bad for your profits? Is it detrimental to society to allow gameplay? Most of all, what right do you have to say what type of software we can use on our PC and what ones we can't? Especially when you offer your own site to play games on, but they either have to be purchased through you or rented month by month by you. That's pretty rude, I think. If you're already a Big Pond customer, or more importantly, you're thinking of becoming a Big Pond customer, I urge you to research as much as you can before agreeing to anything Telstra has to offer, even if it is only $9.95. If you feel as strongly about this situation as I do, I urge you to visit the Big Pond site and register your complaint today. The link is provided below in the comments section. And I also strongly recommend you call them direct and ask them many questions about this before signing up. You may in fact find yourself on a package that has very little to do with your online activities and more to do with how much you pay Telstra each month. If you've gotten to this far through the video, then I thank you for your time and I hope this video may have been some help in your decision on how to proceed with Telstra. Best of luck. Thanks again.